In this video, we're gonna give you tips on how to tile a shower wall, specifically the plumbing wall in a curbless shower that used three by six subway tile. In addition, we're gonna discuss the different tools that make this a lot easier. By the way, before I forget, if you're building a curbless shower and you wanna see how we built the one in this video, we have a series of tutorials right here for you. What we're gonna do on here is basically end our subway tile at the end of our shower area and then allow this bullnose to be the outside of the shower area. The main reason I want to do that is one, you know, my waterproofing ends at the end of my shower so I have all this stuff that I don't want to have to sand down or try to fix. Some of the sealant sticking out here and the dry, you know, like I said, the, the, the backer boards ending at, at the end of my shower. So it's, it's always kind of nice to be able to bring the bullnose or the edge of your towel a couple inches outside of the shower. And not only that, but my shower doors are going to be sitting directly on the middle of this transition. So it's nice to have, you know, a couple inches outside of that for the channel that the, the fixed panel goes into. So with that being said, with subway tile, our, our total dimension is 32 inches. That works out pretty well with the subway tile because now we're, you know, we'll have what I usually like to do is just start out my full tile and half tile stacked at the edge of the shower and then scribe cut and, and fit my corner. But we'll basically have, if we start out at the, the full tile, about a five and a half inch piece. So we're just cutting a half inch off of each side over here, which will look pretty good. As you saw, we set the first row of tile using a laser level. This is an older Bosch laser level, but we like it because it has three different settings. The first setting is for your crosshair. This laser is definitely bright enough. It's about three or four feet away from the tile. As the batteries die, so will the laser brightness. The second setting is a horizontal laser. And the third setting is your plumb laser line. We also use the vertical laser to install Schluter Rondek and make sure that it's perfectly plumb with the tile. This Bosch laser level also has an adapter on the bottom that allows you to use it with a standard tripod. Very much like with the main shower wall, we had to cut down these first tiles to fit the contour of the shower pan. Then we applied our Artex 77 with the flat side of the trowel and then used directional troweling upward so all the trowel ridges face the same direction. We did back butter these tiles because remember these tiles need to have a solid bond to the backer board. And then we also align them with our laser level. So again it's very important to have that laser level aligned with the first row of tile on the main shower wall. And then add your horseshoe shim underneath these for an expansion and control traction joint. We had to scrap cut the first row of tile to fit the contour of this curbless shower pan and we used an angle grinder for that. This is the fine WSG7. It's a four and a half inch angle grinder. There are actually two variations. Normal switch on the side here or you can get the WSG7 with a paddle switch. So that's more of an elongated switch on the side. We also used a diamond blade with the WSG7. This is DeWalt's XP4. It's a continuous rim diamond blade. We also used the Montelite CGX115. We always recommend trying to be as safe as possible when cutting tile. And one of the best purchases you can make is a silica dust respirator. This is the Sunstrom silica dust respirator. We've been using this for a while now. We got it on Amazon for about 50 bucks and they work really well. Notice the shim between that tile and the main shower wall tile. So that's a 16th inch expansion and contraction joint. So now we aligned our laser level to be plumb with the right side of that first tile. And we that allowed us to set these tiles easily and quickly on the second row. Now we're getting the mark for around the mixing valve and we're using the angle grinder and diamond blade to make this cut. Again, be very careful where all the safety gear for this, but having a good angle grinder and a good diamond blade will help you out tremendously. Now we're also taking our time with this because you want this tile to fit as closely as possible to the mixing valve. In this case, we're cutting these tiles such that they're about 1 16th of an inch away from that grow and mixing valve and the reason why is because you want the escutcheon to cover up the gap between the tile and the mixing valve. So it's not a bad idea if you didn't cut very nicely around here and whether you should make sure you cut a little bit closer it's just to get your escutcheon plate on here and try to evaluate 
whether it's going to cover. And I'm very close over here. I got a little bit too much of a cut over here. So I'm going to actually take this off and recut this. If you're going to be grinding down ceramic or porcelain tile, we highly recommend Montelite's STL diamond blade. This has diamonds on both sides of the blade and it'll spin onto a 5 8 inch arbor on an angle grinder. As you can see, the STL is great at grinding down ceramic or porcelain tile and doing it to within a fraction of an inch. Now we got lucky here and we were able to just make a little square cut in our subway tile with the angle grinder. Again, if you need to make a hole in the center of the tile, you can use a diamond hole saw. But in this case, we just needed to make a little square cut and the escutcheon for that shower arm will definitely cover that. One of our favorite diamond hole saws is the Mondrillo Wave from Montelli. The reason why we like this is because of its endurance. It lasts a long, long time. This hole saw will also work with an angle grinder with a 5 8 inch arbor. You simply just screw it onto the arbor like so. So here we're just maintaining our expansion and contraction joint between the ceiling and the last row of tile. We got lucky. There's only about 1 16th and 1 8th of an inch. And again, we'll be covering that joint with a siliconized acrylic latex sealant. Give us a thumbs up if you like the tips in this video. Also, we're going to put links to all the tools that we use down in the description. So that way, if you want to check them out, you can do that. Also, if you have your own tool suggestion, please add that down in the comments comments because maybe we should be making a video about something that we don't know about. So thanks for watching this tutorial and we'll definitely see you in the next one. Take care.